Hello and welcome to this video, my name is Miguel and in this video I want to talk about variables and data types. So I will start with a short definition of what a variable is. After this I want to give you a short example and in the end we will talk about data types like in character, in boolean and in string and even more. So basically in variable is a symbolic name with an associated value. And this symbolic name is called identifier and the value has to be of a certain data type. But let me give you a short example. In this example I want to display my name on a label. And I'm saving my first name in a variable called first name. So the identifier is first name and the data type is in string. So in text. I can easily set my name, but before I can use my name, I have to do a definition so that Free Pascal knows what my name what first name is. And because I'm doing this definition in a procedure, it has to be on the head of the procedure. So before we start with the begin block, this definition consists of my identifier and colon the data type and in the end in semicolon. But I also have to tell Free Pascal that I want to define one or even more variables and so and so we have to write down the raw keyword. And in the end I also want to display my name and doing a concatenation between your first name is and first name. So basically I'm appending first name to the string your first name is and the result looks like this. So let's talk about data types. But I have to say that there are many data types and I just want to talk about the most important ones for beginners. So we will talk about the boolean, integer numbers, floating point numbers, characters and last but not least strings. A boolean is basically just true or false, nothing else. And let me give you a short example. In this video we are learning, so I'm setting learning to true. The integer is a bit complex. It's an integer number and in this example I'm calculating 10. Therefore I'm starting with the definition of my numbers. In this example I have three identifiers of the data type integer number 1, number 2 and number 10. If you want to define two or even more identifiers of the same data type you can write it in the same line like I did with number 2 and number 2, number 1 and number 2, sorry, separated within comma. But you could also do it like I did with number 10 and start off with a new line. In the beginning of this block I'm setting number 1 to 6 and number 2 to 4. This is an integer and not in character or string, so I don't have to use the simple quotation mark. In the end of this procedure, I'm calculating number 10 by using number 1, so 6, plus number 2, so 4. And there are differences between signed and unsigned integers. Basically, a signed integer can represent negative and positive values. An unsigned integer can only represent positive numbers or negative numbers, but not both. On the other hand, an unsigned integer could represent bigger values than a signed integer of the same bit size. And bit size is an important keyword because the size of an integer, so the range, is defined by the bit size. In this table I have summarized, summarized the most important integers. 
And in short int has only the bit size of one byte, so it can only represent minus 128 to 127. In small int is greater. In integer is kind of different because in some compile modes of free Pascal, or actually I think in only one, an integer could even be in small int. But normally if you're developing for Windows, Linux, Macintosh, um, or even Raspberry, so on a Raspberry Pi, we are talking about a 32-bit integer. And there's even the 64-bit integer, which is often used by myself in databases. There are also floating point numbers and the two most important one in my point of view are single and double. So for instance, I'm defining pi as a double, which equals about 3.14159264. And single and double also have some differences, especially in size. So in single is 32-bit and in double is 64-bit, and they differ in the range, but also in the precision. There's also in char, and in char is just one character. For instance, my char equals m. So in character could be something like a or b, but not a and b, or even in sentence. If you want to have an identifier of a sentence, you have to use string, because in string may consist of multiple characters. Of course, in string could also be empty. And in string is actually a complex data structure or data type because it is actually an array of char. But we will talk about arrays in future videos. And in this example, I'm kind of doing a um, concatenation of my first and last name to create my full name. And so I have my first and last name as string. I'm assigning the string and we have to use the simple quotation marks to define that we are that we are talking about in string expression. And in the end I'm doing a concatenation, but I also want to have an an empty character between to have some space. I think this was everything I wanted to say. And I know it's a bit complicated to talk about theory, but I think this was really important. And we will use this knowledge in the next video. I also hope that you really enjoyed this video and I would like to hear some feedback. Bye.